What kind of qualities are you trying to achieve with, with these experiments? This so, one's. Yeah, I, I really wanted to eat, uh, achieve the, like, the, the squishiness. I was looking for an interesting new material and I think foam is very much based on plastic nowadays uh, and I think that uh, can use some innovation uh, and the seagrass I saw as a potential because it's also very light and airy uh, so I thought it would be a great addition to the foam that I already created made out of chickpeas. We see an important role for designers in creating the new world of tomorrow. And it's not just through uh, the design of products, but it's also through doing research. Research is a way of answering questions. And uh, designers are in a unique position to use their skills uh, to address these, these issues uh, that we need for the world of tomorrow. And here you use the material, it looks like there's more on top. Did you, yeah. did you mix it in a different way than with this one? I think Art Academy is here to uh, have students explore uh, in a creative way and I think making my own materials is a very uh, creative way of exploring what could be done in this world, also for products. For us it's really interesting to work with students and not only with professionals uh, because it teaches them a lot of important skills but also uh, they have a lot of interesting views and new perspectives that they can bring into the research and it can become a really nice collaboration. I chose this as a graduation project because I saw the potential uh, in the material that I made back then, uh, which is basically a foam um, made with seagrass in it. So I used these uh, Neptune balls in my foam uh, as a fiber and as a material to stuff it with. I think it's very important to also, as a product designer, uh, know what materials you're using and where they come from and what better way to do it than creating the material yourself. In the Netherlands, in the past actually, there used to be a big culture of cultivating seagrass that we use, was used for different applications. But this industry has completely disappeared. Um, but in this new future, uh, where we're dealing a lot with water again, um, these techniques and this, these, uh, this knowledge might become relevant again. And um, we were interested in seeing uh, if this plant could be part of a new material ecosystem, a sustainable material ecosystem, and what design applications uh, we could find for that. I think as a designer, it's very important to explore, to experiment, and uh, I think that's how innovation is created. It's, it's having knowledge about something old and creating something new with it. Uh, combining all of those old things. Uh, it was important for me to get a look outside of our tests, so also to work with more within the professional field and to have a look at how that works. Uh, so it was more about just exploring and getting the freedom to do so. It's also about a first step of knowing how to do it in a professional field. I think that's absolutely the future of working together because um, no one can do something like this on their own. Like uh, an individual designer can never um, go as far and as broad uh, as we did when we worked together with a group. Well, to wrap up this project, we made a really nice online publication uh, called Exploring Seagrass for Sustainable Design with Artes Press. Um, and it tells you about uh, all the research we did, did, the people who worked on it, the questions ha we had, uh, the steps we took, uh, and also the work uh, from students that were involved, like Lisanne. Uh, you see their material experiments uh, and how everything comes together and um, yeah, what the potential might be in the future for seagrass.